somebody's dead. Oh, How y'all doing? Somebody getting fu- Yeah, 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 yeah. We're doing it. We're going in for glory. Um, that's somebody. Hi. <laughs> but first things first. First things first. Let me let me switch the screens up a bit so that they can hear you guys. Hold on a second. What's up? Hello. Hi, hi. What's good? Hey there. I am joined by special guests today. It is Sharpie and Crank. What's up? Yo, what's good, everybody? Play Skullgirls. If you can't touch me two times, don't fucking talk to me. You know what's good. You're, don't shake my hand after you lose when you're salty, okay? I don't want it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Hello. Grand introduction. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up, Crank? How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. How about you? Not too bad. Thank you for coming out to get into fighting games. Let me turn this music down. We will turn it right back up when we're getting ready to play. But for now, we are here. We're going to be doing some Skullgirls labbing. Basically, this is a first time uh, attempt at like a connection based episode. I've been apparently dodging Sharpie in this game for some time now. Is that the, is that what we're going with? I mean, I wasn't going to say it. You did, but OK. <laughs> uh, I've, been, I've been challenged. I've been challenged to play Skullgirls uh, some, quite some time. A couple times. Uh, a couple Multiple times. times. Yeah. And, and I pretty much said, hey, when we're when we throw it right back into the rotation, uh, we will do it. And so look at that. It's back in the rotation. And... Hell has frozen over, people. Y'all thought it wasn't going to happen. You guys were like, there will never be a universe. Well, GGPO and rollback based netcode is going to be the forefront of evolution. That's what y'all thought. How but I'm here to say, ho ho, biatch. Let's go. How about that? Let's go. How about Cheers. that? So, um, uh, brief introduction, I suppose, uh, for those who are unfamiliar. <laughs> Uh, Sharpie, I first saw you commentating at Evo. That was my introduction oh to my you. Oh my god! But did uh, you really? Yeah, that was that was my introduction to who you were. Um, would you this like? This is embarrassing. I've literally never commentated at Evo before in my life. Then what were you commentating? <laughs> I was probably commentating Dragon Ball Fighters. Oh my god! At Winter Brawl or oh my Final god. Round. The I commentated up. the very first Dragon Ball tournament in the world yeah i saw you commentating on a tournament i thought it was evo i it was not evo then it was something else no i completely understand because let me tell you what i brought <laughs> the tournament the production value on that stream okay it oh was you know what you know like... what sharpie you know what it was <laughs> i just saw a vision of the future my mistake mm, i'll take that i had I a premonition and I saw deep into the future. That's what it was. Let's have a let's have a round of applause for that black backpedal. <laughs> Good stuff. Yo. Good stuff. Man, that was smooth. I should take note. Come on Loved now. It. Come on. Now, right? <laughs> I'm just. I'm. This is the first round is data, honey, and you already showed your cards. Don't right. up back against me. Okay. No, but all seriousness. <laughs> in all seriousness, um, I started playing Skullgirls. It was actually one of the very first fighting games that I actually played competitively. Um, after I played Super Smash Brothers Melee, and the big reason I got into it so hard was because the community was super positive. It was one of the very first games I started streaming besides League, um, and the community just super embraced me when I was going through my trials and tribulations trying to learn this game. The number one thing I struggled with was uh, actually DPs. That's a very hard input to do. Hmm. Um, <laughs> and so when I got to a breaking point and the community was there for me, it was really hard for me to ever leave. It's kind of all I've ever known regarding the fighting game community. And I guess... Uh, I just kept growing inside the Skullgirls community. When Dragon Ball came out, I was like, yo, another team-based fighting game. Let me try it. That game is not Skullgirls. That game is not Marvel. That game is Dragon Ball. And Bandai was very much so for you to know that. So um, <laughs> that game's just a smidgy different, but it's it's still really fun. And that's really probably where I got like my commentary start. That was actually the very first game that I officially commentated. Um, I will say that... I think my commentary for that game was the best I could personally do, but I'm really, really excited to look for opportunities to hopefully commentate Evo. It's something I've wanted to do for a very long time since I started hosting and streaming tournaments. I told myself if Skullgirls was ever at Evo, I wanted to be the person commentating it, mm -hmm. and now I, I finally have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's who I am. There you go. And uh, Crank? So, um, I mean, I got into Skullgirls like eight years ago. I really, really fell in love with the game. A lot of people fall in love for the art. A lot of people fall in love for the music. I definitely just fell in love with the gameplay. Right away, it stood out to me a lot. 
So I just kind of played naturally and completely separately. I got into commentary for various other games. Like, I would never really cared if it got known or not. Um, I just kind of did it because it's fun for me. I was just trying to do me the best I can, you know? And it turned out a lot of people loved it. So I just kind of dug into Skullgirls, which is one passion, dug into commentary and put them together. At this point, I've commentated at a few majors and have two weekly streams. So I've just been hustling along. Right on. Cool. Um, well, hey, like, uh, glad to have you guys on to uh, guide the hips, so to speak. Before any labbing can get done, uh, one mm -hmm. needs to access that lab. And in order to access that lab, we've got to run our set. You're right. It is what it is. We do got to run a set. I was thinking of first to five. First to five? That's going to take five games. <laughs> I mean, it may take four if you just bow out beforehand. Damn. I'm just saying it could be five seconds as opposed Yo, we to can, 50 seconds. We can do first to death if you want. It is all good. Um, no, we can't. No, we can't, honey. It would be an embarrassment to you. All right. All right. All right. Y'all see how comfortable he got? You'll see how comfortable he got real quick. We can first to death. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Persia, I know you're in chat. I know you heard that. I'm sorry for that disrespect. I can't be I can't be comfortable on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> Someone best call 911 now because it'll take him too long to get here if you guys call until after I'm done. Sorry okay. For All right. We need to do we do, we need to do the information exchange. Okay. There you are. Yeah, I'll just jump in. There you are. Perfect. You can see me? We're done. I'm in. I'm in your You're room. not in my lobby. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Just to recap here, you don't have any patches or anything live on your version of Skullgirls, right? Patches? Like, there's that GGPO patch from eons ago. I have if you throw whatever the, in... the latest update is as of... Okay. Are you... Fantastic. Are we playing right now? It looks like we're playing right now. I'm literally not in the same lobby as Oh you my right god. Now. Someone... What? Someone what changed someone? their name yeah, to probably. Turkey? <laughs> That's the next level? Yo, Kadirits, what are you guys doing? This Wait. is wild! This is wild! Someone turned their name into the purple Sharpie? How does that make any sense? My stream! Are you on Wi-Fi? Is this person on Wi-Fi too? What are we doing here? I don't know what's going on! That's amazing. I, I told you it was going to happen. I told I, you. I, I might have to fight this person. Okay, stream. We're gonna go ahead and just real quick oh go tune god. in to Wally's stream. Oh my go god! I can't believe this. What's is going happening. on over here? All right, to see it. All right, there you go. Okay, you should be able to see me now. Frank. Okay, let me just get out of this room real quick. That's insane. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious, dude. Okay. I I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. I knew it. I. Like, whenever you're like, oh, man, let's just stream real quick. And you're like, oh, man, who am I going to play with? Yep. Ah, let yep. me just open, go straight into this public lobby. So I guess that's <laughs> one, uh, one zero so far. <laughs> I guess the score is one zero. <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, oh, your sure. PNB here is pretty nice. The biggest issue is that you didn't maximize your undizzy usage. Mm -hmm. And right before you went into SSJ before that, I can see what you're trying to do. If you had actually ground pound it right there, you would have killed them, but you did a little bit late. Okay, you're playing kind of reactionary here, but I appreciate the first round download the purple Sharpie. Good stuff. That's, Good that's stuff. 1-0, oh, Wooly. All right, so you All see right. you see the, the, the mistake was the real of the mm -hmm. real account is twitch.tv slash the purple, the purple Sharpie. Yeah, and it has the new new emote, which is supposed to essentially instill hatred and fear in anyone who has ever had the unfortunate opportunity of playing League of Legends. Um, and the caption that I usually add with that is, wow, you really tried. You know, like just to, <laughs> to set the vibes for all of this. And as you can see, I'm also not wire. What's a, what's a League of Legends? What is that? Is that some kind League of- League of Legends? Never heard of it before in my life. I actually don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's that new fighting game that's gonna come out soon. Oh, right? that new fighting game that's gonna come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shout outs to Project L. That sounds Which fun. Which is what you're about to get here, Wooly. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it does sound fun, huh? Let's go. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, Crank, if you would like to give him some pro tips. Um, big Bannerino. Oh, he's going. He's going a trio, folks. I'm he's going. going I'm going season one right now. All right, so everybody. Everyone, let me be. Let me do my thing here. Uh, Ooh, that color coordination looking mighty nice. What the? Whoa! Did we run out of time? 
Shit. No, we still have 18 seconds. All right. Did you want to go back? Nope, that's fine. That's fine. It's okay. Hold on. Actually, let's Are go back. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, I'm a, I'm a lead. I'm gonna rejoin on you. What happened there? Yeah, that's the only thing you can do is when you're at that stage in the game, all you can do is just leave and then re rejoin. Shit. Okay. In fact, if you'd like, you can actually go into training mode and set your team to your macros real quick if you'd like. Ooh. Um, do you want to do that? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. In fact, I should set my button macros too, actually. I think I just had them yep. set off. Yep, button check, all that, always. By the way, it's your right as a player. Hey! Any tournament to ask for a button check. Beautiful. So mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity for folks who, like myself, who haven't don't use macros and haven't set team things to uh, see exactly what features you're talking about and uh, do this for themselves at home. Now, there are only two macros shown underneath. It says macro one and macro two, mm -hmm. but that's incorrect. There's actually four macros in the game. And oh, Crank, you're aware of what I'm thinking about it's as well, correct? Six. Yeah. yeah, there we go, six. That's Whoa, right. really? Uh, yes, yeah. so, so there are two macro up. buttons. Mm -hmm. You can press up, down, or just leave the stick in neutral whenever you hit mm -hmm. the macro button. That lets you set three different ones for each button. Yep. Okay. That is, that is tech that has been unspoken until this very moment. Okay, so how, I'm, I'm in the, I'm on the training mode character select screen. How do I save my team? All right, so the very first so, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the size of the team that we want. We're just gonna select our team for normal. This instance, I'm gonna use the best color palette of Eliza, as well as Carpenter X, which is one of the very best Eliza assists. And I'm also going to choose, not Big Band, but Peacock, because she is a good character as well, right? Now, after I pick my team, and in this instance, because it's training mode, my opponent randomly picks theirs, right? You're gonna go to character or stage select, right? And from here, this is where you can start to set your macro. So if I press my macro oh my one button right now, it says entourage shave to macro one, right? If I hold the up button and press it, it'll save it as well. If I press select, I can actually go back and I can modify my colors. Okay, so you're going into, okay, so pick it and it, you're setting it from training mode, from in the actual match then. Mm -hmm. right. No, no, no. no. So you wait till you're at the oh, here we go. I see it. Yes. Press macro That's one or two to save entourage. Macro Ooh, one. Go. Saved. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into it. Full bleed. I actually want to thank you because you're the reason that I know Wooly. You tagged me in the very first tweet where I said, all I do is play Skull Girls and eat ass. And I'm all done eating ass. <laughs> See if we get lucky. It's okay to be stuck. No, nope. no luck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. She who mauls. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh my God, we got a one. Got that classic up there. Just kill it. All right. All right. All right. All right. Absolutely nothing. He's got hyper armor. And that air drop. What do we got in the corner? Alright, we got a jab out of it. Alright, we're going to going to commit. What do we got? Raw tag! Okay. Alright, there's one way to get him. He grabs, he grabs, folks. All right, we're gonna do it lame. We're gonna do it lame. Oh my! Pick up off that double. Get a little jumpy. Uh, start to take an advantage of the lane as is going. Getting that red health back. Alright. One yes, big Eliza. I am rich. Oh, there he is. I'm the final boss. Alright, I guess it's one to one. Yes, it is. <laughs> one to one. Hey now, let's not be cheeky. Putting myself on the board <laughs> against Wooly. Willie, how you feeling? I'm trying to remember how to do anything right now. Mm-hmm. 
I do want to tell you, because I know it's been a while since you played, Eliza's Skeleton. Right? Oh, real quick, before I do that, I just want to pause for one second, because everybody, 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 Justin Wong is in the stream, and he just donated five gifted subs, which I super, super, duper Holy appreciate, shit. honey. Thank you so much for that money. As a matter of fact, you're money. Yo, awesome. Uh, what, money. what up, Justin? How you doing? That's very cool. This is even worse now. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Wait, Wooly, are you using frame delay? Are you, do you have it set to something right now? Is it not set to zero for you? Uh, I'm not sure. It might be. It's when you first start the game, when you yeah. first start the game, does it have your frame delay set to zero? Uh, or are I, you setting it to a different number? I think it was set to five by, ah, by default. That's the, that's the problem. I'm leaving. I'm leaving real quick. That Matt the Mulligan. Thank you so <laughs> no much, problem. Havoc, very much for letting me know about that. I apologize. I'm not watching the stream right now. Yes, but um, also, hey, Wooly is so focused on not getting blown up that he doesn't know his game audio is too loud. Oh shit, my game audio is too loud, thank you. <laughs> um, but yes, also, just so everyone is aware, because this is actually a, a thing that most people don't know about Skullgirls, you always play set to zero. That number right there actually tells you how many how many frames you want to delay your match or your input being sent. So when you send it, set it to five, it's actually sending all of your inputs uh, five frames later gotcha. than everybody okay. else. That existed mostly to help people who may have had terrible connections uh, connect with people who didn't so that it was at a fair basis. And you guys may know it because it's basically like playing Street Fighter V. Ayo! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And Street Fighter 5 doesn't let you even choose your delay, but uh, being able to set your own delay means how much you want to sacrifice visuals for bad connection being more playable. Should be a little bit better for you now. Not that it'll matter. What? Sneaking right past the horse. Oh, not sneaking past that time. Just gonna drag me out yeah. of it, huh? Yeah, that's good fundamental. We got all that third string. Relaunch, go for that air drive reset. Man, for that undizzy. Can't let that green bar below the health bar fill up too much. Be hard to on your combo. Nice combat, can't hit super. Alright, go for that white bar. Yeah, so Sharpie was actually trying to talk about this before, but that skeleton has hyper armor. It can't even be beaten out by a sweep like most armor can be. So you gotta respect it. When the skeleton comes out, it's uh, the skeleton's turn. Counterplay is snapping it or grabbing it. Of course, one more time. That bird insurance is so good. Get that light, light into medium. You hit confirming. Yeah, when in doubt, bird. That was coming. I will live and die in the corner. This is my home now. <laughs> Being buried in the corner, you're about to get buried with your riches as well. With that three meter you're sitting on. Right? Wait a second, I'm sound effect for this. I'm very proud of the sound effect I got for this one. Oh. You even try it. You even try it. You even try it. <laughs> it is it is it's hilarious because like whatever effects you have on your side of the stream oh, you are can't not, hear at all. Are you not here at all. At so all, I just everybody. hear I just hear your voice and you're hearing me say, Are you even trying? He's like, what the fuck's <laughs> like, going what is, on? <laughs> what is what is actually happening? <laughs> Hey Sharpie, could you tell Wooly to lower his sound effects volume? My sound effects Everybody, volume. Everybody, I'm not, I'm not Wooly, yeah. guys. All right. Come on. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I mean, I got some DMs as well saying that the sound effects volume is kind of high. So as soon as this match is play. done, I will, I will try to do yeah. it. Yeah. Come Again, on, sorry. Come this is. I don't. I have. This is the first time we're not. We're doing a non-local. Hey, yeah. it's Sonic Fox. This is the first time we're Sonic. trying this type of set. This type of uh, getting to fight a game stream out. So yeah. uh, there are going to be some growing pains, unfortunately. Alright, giving that auto check, round start, segment super. Not getting that hit. Blocked two times. Good stuff staying off the ground. Don't want to sneak on in and grab you by the feet. 
Alright, we got another one in the corner. Back off the light. Alright, oh, the the oh, came out a little bit too early. Wake up recovery doing you good. Alright, snap him out of there. You can get a lot of that red hook back in Alright, nice block on the Elvis. Respected it. Landed on the ground. Didn't know what to do. Alright, gonna get that as a fit. Or should I be played full speed? Ooh, yeah. Elvis doesn't care. Raw! <laughs> okay. Oh. He's grabbing. I'm terrified. Okay, now I don't want to approach anymore. Alright. I get the sliding knockdown. And it's simple. Alright, Spear so gonna raw tag in. I think I got a little bit more chance to get some breathing room. Maybe make her play the zoning game. Ah, no, yeah, alright. Snapping all right. that right out of there. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, cool. Like, now after that delay, it's spooky overhead with that axe. Okay. Three one. What one? What one? <laughs> <laughs> what one? Let's not. Let's not do this. <clears throat> my my lobby broke. Did everyone leave the lobby? Oh, uh, I did not, but I was going to so that I can fix my volume because. Uh, gotcha. Uh, yeah. So my lobby just <sighs> broke. That happens sometimes. Let All me right. go ahead and remove. Oh my god, man! I super prefer doing this in person i wish i was yeah, in some that's very fair i wish i was somewhere in america <laughs> where like the fgc existed where like i could invite people over to like do these types of streams but so you know what's really funny up in montreal is, canada uh, it is what it is there, there are a couple of canadian players that are actually very prevalent i don't know what part of canada you live in i don't know if you live in toronto montreal or where montreal i think we actually have a couple of players there no shit yeah, I've been talking really to. Well too. I've been talking yeah, to well the because uh, I know the Street Fighter scene here and I know the anime scene a bit more. I've mm -hmm. been looking for like Montreal, uh, like people that play to like come on and do like a like an educational episode, and I have not been able to find any. Most of the FGC that talks to each other didn't really have any answers for me, unfortunately. Huh. So. Yeah. We can definitely fix that on up. That sounds dope. That'd be fucking cool. I mean, Chad actually mentioned Scarman specifically, so Scarman. Yeah, I was gonna say Liam, Liam, but I didn't want to like, yeah. I didn't want to put his name out there if he wasn't comfortable with it. But yeah, there are very, very prominent Skullgirls players. Liam is actually one of the developers for Hidden Variable, which is currently responsible for Skullgirls Mobile. Very well known cool. Skullgirls player as well. I don't know, just things to think about while you're grabbing me. <laughs> yeah, that axe respects nobody. Sir. Right, again, come with the raw tag. You know what I don't appreciate? I don't appreciate this big. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Wooly. No, I feel you feeling yourself. I'm right not now. feeling anything, <laughs> and the fact that you guys are calling out my raw tags <laughs> makes me feel awful, but it is what it is. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Well, it's, it's right, like, it's so off. ridiculous. It's like, why would I expect a raw tag at that exact point? Because you know you're fighting I mean? someone <laughs> who cannot play the game, Sharpie. It's genius. You are fighting a scrub, and a scrub knows nothing about the layers of Yomi. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm respecting you too much. I apologize about that. Don't worry, that won't happen again. You want to play scummy? You want me to play scummy? I'll play scummy. I can go scummy. You want to go dumb? I can go dumb with you! Oh my okay? god. Here it comes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's so Shelby's actually probably looking for a hit confirm into a snap right now. No, I'm so... not. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not? I'm not okay, as a matter of fact. Nope. Nope. Oh, all right. Nope. Not looking for none oh, of that. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Giving him as much respect as he deserves. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Nah, come on. Nah, come on. <laughs> oh, shit. Nah. Nah. Raw tag me. 
All right, well, if you wanna you wanna start playing dirty yourself, you guys always got a punch move. Peacock's notorious DP, it's quarter-cycle forward medium punch. It's not exactly a normal DP motion, but it is invulnerable. Oh okay, that's the same reward that Raw Tag's been getting you. Uh, yeah, see. maybe try it next game when you get a chance. <laughs> oh no, that was my one opportunity. Armor. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> I might as well take a chance to talk about it, uh, since Sharpie has so much red health right now. So in general, um, characters build up red health, and when you switch to another character and they're not out on point, they will heal that red health back. Whenever right. they come on the screen, whether it's an assist call or whatever, they will start to heal that. But Sharpie, playing as a solo, can't do that. She can't switch to another character. So she often will spend a meter to snap, because that's the only way she can get her red health back. She gets up, I think, 60% roughly back. That's just numbers. None of that really matters. Yeah. It's a certain percentage based off the scaling, I believe, on three. It's um, a 30% on a duo, I believe I get 50%. Or a little bit less, I think, might cut the ratio on duos. And My god, it's... he's just a man. Bro, he is just a man that raw tag, raw tag twice against me, grabbed me seven times in this The complete lack of respect is... I'm upset. <laughs> yes. I'm upset, I have had I'm zero upset. respect. It is You true. don't understand. It I is the only... some of these Oki sets. I'm stealing man, whatever dirty damage I can. I'm taking whatever dirty damage I can get. This is how it. This is how it be. I'm about to get deleted from this game right now. Guys, <laughs> right, with that jumping medium kick. Such a good button for Eliza. See, you guys all see how nice that setup would have been if he had just respected it. Like. <laughs> Uh. Yeah. Also, a little while ago, I brought up the snap to like heal on Eliza's side. Another use for that is to get rid of hyper armor, like we mentioned before. But it also gets rid of that red health, so Sharpie can't heal it back, which makes it twice as good against the solo one. So. Alright, then one the brass, SSJ, end up full screen again. Make him play that neutral game out. Jumping over that Elvis, he's been hit by that too many times. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, because right. why wouldn't he raw tag? Sometimes you just gotta reverse it. Right, snap him out of there, shuffling in that red health bank. Alright, like alright, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Getting hit by that overhead. Actually, doing a lot of work today. <laughs> throw for throw. Throwing out the throne this time. Ooh, all right, card canceling the heavy into segment. Throwing off the timing a little bit. All right, we got one more grab. So we can finish off of this. Ooh, doesn't get the launcher. Remember this! Every <laughs> single person that comes through my stream thinking that I am not shit. Remember what I can do to you. Remember All what right. you do. And when you pick Big Band, Ta remember All what right. you're about. When you pick Cerebella, remember what's good. And let's talk about we it. We shot. one goes out to every single one of my haters that has ever picked Solo Big Band against me. We Any single Cerebella I've ever I seen in my life. Oh. That's who that match was for. All y'alls. Okay, we shan't be uh, attempting many grabs anymore. Let's uh, let's be a little bit more responsible with our buttons. Although, Crank, you were saying that um, Peacock's knife uh, should come out a bit more often just for, like, creating space. Yeah, so, so the quarter cycle forward medium punch, we call it lovingly the punch move in the SGC. Um, it's an invulnerable reversal. It is grab vulnerable, but it is still really, really difficult to punish. So, if anything, it's just like a, a DP. It's a way to get your opponent off of you. They're really, really clinging to you. It's kind of risky against Eliza because she does have that spooky skeleton. And it won't do much against that, mm -hmm. mm. but it does um, provide a way for you to not have to respect everything that Eliza is doing. Because Peacock is fundamentally a zoner, right? And so she wants to fill that space. She wants to get away from her opponent, and that's one tool that you can use to get away. Question about Eliza: um, the yes. the uh, full screen, like, I, is it a grab from? That skeleton is just a regular hit confirm. Is it low? Grabs. Albus, however, is. Oh, that was, I was holding down back just now. Yes, you were. Yeah, so that that's actually. That is a grab confirm. So yeah. wait, that is a grab. This is a grab, yes. That... Now my super is not. 
I oh, apologize. I'm sorry. I no, I was I was asking about what you just did right now. So that okay, that yes, is a grab. This is, this is a grab confirmed. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. It um, is not checkable. You just have to not be on the ground. You have to not time. be on the ground. And how fast yeah. is that animation startup that you can? Can you react and jump out when you see him pop up? Yeah. Or? You can. You, you can probably just jump the minute. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, can it it's come in really at different not ranges? That fast. It can't. Okay. It essentially comes wherever your character is. If you actually call, if you call an assist. It'll pop up where your assist is if you're not on the ground. Okay. Um, it just pops up essentially. It's very, very, very reactable um, and super fast paces. It's one of the slower moves that Eliza has. Okay. Um, and it's really, really not amazing for anything bigger. Like essentially, if I do it at any point where oh, there you are, by the way. I, you know what? I'm in a different iteration of the casino than you, so I can't see myself. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, you're in, you're in my iteration. Right. But basically, um, if I am this close and I do it and you jump. You can punish me for that. Uh, Very I see. Easy. Okay. All same right. with the Albus. Um, same with the Horus right here, which, by the way, is an overhead. And but you can see it's very slow. And uh, if you get, if you're all the way close to the corner, he appears uh, all like right in front, of, right at the edge of the screen. Like as you he get appears, closer, he appears wherever your feet are. Uh... So essentially, if you had jumped at that point in time, he would appear wherever your feet were in the air. Unless you had to assist on the ground, at which point he would try to he would try to get between you and your assistant wherever you're going. So it's a tracking move. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. It, okay. It's That's really it. it's really not that great. The reason I use it is because I'm a solo. Most Elizas never use it. Um, it's super underused, I think, in competitive play. But it has really really good setups. Um, mm -hmm. And it, the properties have changed quite a few times because unfortunately, when I was playing a money match on stream and Mike was commentating, he saw how I was using it. And it was like that's too good. Sharpie doesn't know how to use it. But other people will, and they'll break it. And so we removed it from the game because he hates me. I see. <laughs> yeah, Mike, I know you're watching my stream because I sent you the link. So, like, when you see this, I don't want to oh, hear Jesus shit. Jesus Christ. Is this... Oh, man. This is absolutely... Huh. I try to hide in my corner so that no one can see how fucking terrible I am. And now <laughs> you're telling me that Jay Wong and Mike are possibly watching, and this is Justin terrible. Is, Justin is a friend of mine. Oh, my God. Well, that that's this... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Justin is a friend of mine. Balls so, um, on stream, as we say. Yeah, let's do this last round. Here, I'm having fun. This is great. This is hype. I am super happy we started with the matches. I just, I, was... <laughs> I just, I just posted a tweet and said I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to just dick around in some Skullgirls and try to learn how to not be as ass and. Now uh, I am being broadcast. I have to absolutely object to that statement. As a matter of fact, sir, I told you that I do nothing but eat ass and play this freaking game. True. And I told you, True. I told you True. that I'm all done True. eating ass. True. So don't be coming up here acting <laughs> like you didn't know what was about to happen, okay? I don't know if you've earned the right to run these colors yet. We're going to have to see how you do in the labbing section of the game. But you know, it's okay because in Skullgirl, you have multiple tries to go ahead and to speed. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's a consistent learning, and it's always just great to, to I am see being someone that's willing to do it. Kept from my color selection right now. Hell, I'm trying to invite new people into the FGC and it's extend a bridge, and you're telling me my colors are not allowed. <laughs> I thought I thought I thought you played fighting games. I thought you knew about the palette mix-up, but oh I'm kind of underwhelmed right now, Willie. I'm kind of underwhelmed. Oh my god. All right, we Jesus. done? Yeah, we, <laughs> Are we yeah. good? That, I, that, that Is it terrible was enough? Six, All right, That wonderful. was actually the sixth map, Beautiful. match I think we played. Beautiful. But thank you very much for playing it. No All right, let's go ahead and start up this... Uh, let's, let's roll go ahead. the fucking credits. <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to have to move my camera to the shower. And sure. turn on, turn it on, and put it, make it, make it as cold as possible. Uh, no. Uh, okay, so let, let's 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 uh, let's lab it up then, shall we? Is that the team that you're interested in practicing, by the way? N not necessarily. So to be perfectly honest, um, mm -hmm. like again, like that's just the only uh, characters I vaguely remember playing back when the game first came out, and mm -hmm. uh, I basically might as well be starting from scratch. So okay. uh, I'm interested in more in playing. Um, Big Band, uh, Beowulf, and Keeping Peacock. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how well that synergy works together or anything, but those are the characters I like. So I wanted to lab yeah. and figure out a few things with them, at least as far as like getting a bread and butter is concerned, and yeah. um, maybe even like how to how to fight Eliza. How about that? <laughs> okay, that's sure. fair. 
Yeah, yeah. Why don't we Why don't we start with the basic stuff, mm-hmm. which would be the uh, Big Band B and B, and probably the Beowulf B and B. Um, Peacock is relatively simple. You know what I mean? She's a zoner character. You, you keep them out until they're not, and then you put them back in their place. A couple of features that would normally be in the lab you're not going to find here are like uh, save states. Curiosity Unfortunately, can't save state. Um, frame data information is a little bit limited. We don't have like the detailed information about how much in Dizzy is left, it's, like specifically down to a number. But that's okay. It's all numbers for the most part. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started with the basics. So what character do you feel like feeling out? Let's let's walk through Peacock since I, uh, she's my favorite character. I've been playing her since uh, sure. it first came out, but I don't know shit. So uh, why don't um, I start by introducing the concept of Peacock and kind of how she's typically used mm-hmm. in standard play, and then Crank, you can get to introducing some of her more advanced mechanics that she may have. Is that fair? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so Peacock is what's considered a zoner character inside of this game. She was one of the very first characters actually inside of Skullgirls. Um, and she came out with Philia Cerebella and obviously Peacock in some of the earliest versions of the game. Uh, she has a multitude of moves, right? Most of her normals are, are pretty much uh, mid or short range, right? With the exception being some of her bangs, right? And I believe uh, is the input for that crank quarter circle towards, is that what yeah, that is? Quarter circle forward. Uh, and and different punches. Right. You got the uh, the false gun. You got the knife, yep. which uh, does the full screen pushback. I believe that's her normal, right? Not her quarter circle. No, that that was quarter that was quarter circle forward. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, right? okay, okay. And then quarter okay. circle forward heavy, and you get the three hits out of that. But just to move past like the actual actual basics into like what you sort of do with her when you're in like I guess sure. uh, a more competitive yeah, yeah. setting. What would you say are like? Her best buttons, a decent uh, sort so of. That's standing, that quarter it. circle medium that you did, um, where she brought out the knife. That's one of her best moves to keep someone off. It's actually in Volnan's startup up until the knife comes completely out. So when I do this, if you time it properly, you mm-hmm. shouldn't get hit, and I should. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're gonna try it real quick. You ready? Treat it like a DP. Go for it. Exactly. You see yep. right there. Perfect. Um, yep. And you can tell that the Envone hit me too, because right when I went to go hit you, there was a little white splash. And those were the Envone flames basically being like, yes, Sharpie, you press the button, but... Oh, it is there a visual indicator of Envone? In- yes. Okay. Uh, kind of, kind of, in the sense that, like, when you're supposed to get hit by something and it doesn't connect, there's a little white spark. So ah, we'll try it again. Okay. We'll try it again. I can't do slow-mo inside of this training mode, but you should see it even momentarily, okay? So yep. just look for it to be right over my character, I believe, or right over yours. You ready? Yep. You see it right there? It should. It was right next to your head. It's kind of difficult with the palette you have now to see. Oh, but if you okay. check, if you watch, watch right next to her hat. Okay. Yep. Here we go. Yep, I saw it. I saw yeah. it. Yeah. Little little white so spark. It's very tiny. Yeah, but it's basically just for the player while they're watching to say, okay, yeah, I actually got in bone frames there, so I would have gotten hit if I hadn't done that. So you can then essentially go out behind that and also tells the opponent what happened there in real time. There are a lot of things like that inside the game. One of the things I'm gonna tell you is if you go ahead and press the light version of that, this is going to connect. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you counter hit right here. Oh, I was too close, sorry. You see that little heart that appeared right above you? Yeah. That's a counter that, hit indicator? That's a counter hit, yeah. Okay. When that happens, you usually want to start combos off with a heavy, as you know, but I'm just saying in general. Um, typically, if someone gets a counter hit combo, you have a little bit more time before and Dizzy starts grabbing, um, starts 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 adding up basic. <laughs> you want to really maximize right. that damage. You never, ever, 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 as Mike told me, want to start with a light Sharpie because what the fuck are you doing? You had counter hit. That's, that's, but basically how you would play uh, Peacock is that using that move mostly to keep people off of you. You would usually at that point also teleport away, which I don't remember the input for, uh, unfortunately. It's a uh, 2 and 4 um, kick. Oh, okay. Quarter circle towards opponent. Quarter, quarter, quarter circle backwards kick. And she, oh, quarter uh, circle backwards. Yeah. Okay. Uh, quick question. So uh, besides the white spark for counter hit, oh, sorry, white spark for invulnerability <laughs> and for the broken heart for counter hit, are there any other uh, custom hit spark indicators that uh, give you information like that? Yes, uh, there are actually, and they're really, really fast paced inside of a game like Skullgirls, so most people don't notice them. But they're different indicators based off how you got reset. If you got hit low, you see a little, uh, you see a little, um, so go ahead and yeah, walk, walk backwards. Yeah. So right there, oh. you saw it. Okay, yeah, the exclamation marks. That means yeah, it's, a, 
specifically look at the color. You're going to want to remember colors inside of this game, unfortunately. Okay. More than the, what the indicator is. So if I do that. Yeah, it's like yellowish orange. Yeah, it, now go ahead and down back. Uh, time is properly. There we go. That ah, is an okay. overhead. Okay, question mark, exclamation. Blue is overhead. Specifically blue. Yep. Yep. And that's that's something to help players uh, realize what crossed them up. Mm -hmm. And inside of a game like Skull Drills, that is the most important thing because resets are paramount. For uh, reasons that you probably know before, specifically on Dizzy and IPS, this game is very, very reset heavy. Everyone that touches the game is like, oh my god, um, why, why, why are there infinites in this game? They're not infinites. They're actually just resets. Very, very long strings of reactable resets that you probably don't know how to react so, to. So, one second. Blue is over is overhead, and there's a different color for cross-up? Is, is that what you were saying? Oh, no, there's no cross-up. Oh, okay, no cross okay, okay. There's, so, there's no way to tell speaking. if you're crossing up inside of this game uh, via visual yeah. indicator. But to get back to Peacock, basically, uh, yeah, that's going to be it's going to be your basic skills right there. That, that that sword right there, because it's in bone, is a really good keep off me tool. Um, straight into TP. Uh, now, it, uh, so how um, how punishable is it if it gets blocked? Because you, if you're saying it's like a DP, uh, it's got to be pretty bad, I imagine. Typically, what'll happen is the time to do it is when, for example, I get Peacock right here in the corner. Mm -hmm. Much like I had you before, right? And I would come and approach, and you would be like, "Okay, I see you approaching me." So most of the time, you see that come out is when um, is when someone knows, you know what I mean? They're yeah. probably gonna want to get out of the situation. Okay, you know what I mean? So if I were to somehow come down without actually pressing a button and just block it, I'm still not at a place where I can really land to do it, unless I specifically land canceled right next to you, okay. which is pretty uh, pretty much an intermediate slash advanced technique. I still can't do it 100% of the time properly, and I would really have to delay it in order to punish it. But yeah, it is pretty punishable. I think it's like, um, would you? I, I I don't know the exact frames. I would say Can it's probably in the bank of like maybe negative 10 or negative 15. The biggest thing with intermediate peacocks is actually just learning different patterns to utilize. You usually want to go into a match with at least three different variations of your patterns. Um, uh, variants specifically uh, that you use to keep people out and from approaching. Misfortune and Peacock is a matchup that I think Misfortune wins for the most part just because of how easy it is for her to get in. She has a dash, she has a double jump, she can get over just about any anything, so that's not a really good one. Um, I'll use... oh my god, this is gonna sound terrible. <laughs> Crank. Yeah, what's up? How do I switch out my team? <laughs> you tag by I pressing. Oh, for so long! Like medium so punch, long. medium kick, or heavy punch, heavy Two strengths, two mediums, or two heavies. I don't fear that you were born a soul. I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> two it's mediums like or two heavies to switch to partner A or B. Oh no. <laughs> I've been exposed. Good. All oh. right. Good. Good. <laughs> we're all human here. Peacock actually has probably one of the best anti airs in the game, if not the best, in a light normal, which is incredibly valuable. Her crouching light kick uh, sends a boot up like that. Wow. That hitbox is perfectly disjoint and right above and in front of her, so no one can really approach her from that low to the ground. So if anyone tries to approach her like that, she all, it almost always trades in her favor or like works out in a very nice way if you know how to. Control. You have okay. to really get over her to like cross up there in is, order to do that. Is there a hurt box on the boot itself? No. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So it's a very, very good tool. This will like. You see how that got me up there? Yeah. Uh, the entirety of her is actually in bone. So there are certain situations yeah. where it'll actually protect against cross up because someone will get hit right behind Peacock right here. Okay. Which is interesting. Which is the bane of my fucking existence against Persia. <laughs> okay. So so optimally, you, uh, I, you want to knife anti air the character away, but. If it's just a quick reaction situation, this will uh, uh, crouching, crouching light punch, light kick, will serve as uh, a decent anti-air. Actually, the opposite. If you want to turn your brain off, you can always just keep on mashing Corthical for a medium punch. And even if they block the first one, they'll have a hard time punishing it, and most likely get hit by the second one. If you are getting an, uh, to the point where you're trying to optimize and trying to get a better punish on the person other than just knifing them away full screen, that's when you start fishing for that um, crouching light kick. Okay. A lot of professional tutorials, and I want to shout out quickly Mr. Peck, who makes some of the best videos about Peacock. Um, they'll actually start you off with zoning patterns instead, so you can play her without having to worry too much about the combos. But things do get interesting when you introduce combos. Okay. Um, but before you can introduce combos, it's how you use her bombs, which actually help her lead into her combos. So one thing is that 
Uh, unlike most characters, she can cancel a bomb into another bomb, a special into another special. Um, much like a Rekka, but it's just with projectiles. She has a limit of two on the screen at a time, and they do have a cooldown. So, what's really nice is that if you throw out a bomb, such as George's Day Out or whatever, and if you remember, H Teleport sets you to teleport right behind them, yeah. now they're forced to respect a bomb that's walking towards them, and you can teleport to the other side. If they get hit, you get to punish them, and if they block it, then you get to pressure them. So, it's a win win for you. Okay. So, uh, George into, um, into, uh, H Teleport? Yeah. It's throwing out Light George, having a couple other projectiles out there maybe also is really, really good. And then H Teleport, and then they're forced to respect, uh, all the bombs. Because if they try to press any buttons, they're just gonna get hit. Right, okay. In this instance, I'm just holding forward, and fortunately it's... Oh, yeah, see, right there. Crossed me there up. There you go. Right. <laughs> Crossed me up. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say the little bombs that come overhead, as long as you're holding that button, a lot of real high-level Skullgirls uh, Skull players that specifically play Peacock, like Mr. Peck, um, uh, Mr. Peck, TJ, Swift, otherwise known as Swift Fox Dash, um, will actually go ahead and use that mix-up just because of how nice it is. You can usually get a really, really nice confirm off the heavy drop of that, um, which I don't remember. Do you remember what the input is for that, Crank? The item drop is Portal Circle Back, uh, I need the punches. This into, yeah. into what? Teleport will cross me up. Uh, yeah. I thought it specifically doesn't. It, if I'm not mistaken, when you're charging, when an item's dropping, it does a fake teleport. But yeah, right. It's because you're holding a punch button, so you can't actually do that. Um, what you can do, you're talking is about after it drops. You can use it to make a teleport safe once the item drops. Right, exactly. So once uh, you let go of the okay, item, okay, okay, okay. Yes. So yeah. So if like, you also have a George to cover that also like if you combine everything you heard together and you have a george that's keeping you safe like a yeah. guy walking on the ground you have an item falling from the top uh, making that pressure safe and now you get like a three-way reset it's pretty crazy uh okay yeah so just to explain a little bit um to clarify in case anyone was confused so the she has a, an item drop that is three different ranges and uh once it's you can hold the button down and it'll become a bigger item over time until eventually he, like, has a chance of becoming, like, like the Dio Road Roller or, like, a couple other crazy things like that. Um, but, like, yeah, while it's while it's dropping, if I go for a teleport with hard kick, it'll do a fake one. But if I, uh, I guess, do it and then immediately teleport. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Or sometimes Peacocks will, will, uh, will use it to approach and then cross over them. Oh. Which yeah. is really nasty. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, he got, does have an air dash, effects. and that's that's where you can get really dirty with it. Okay. Those. So a couple other tips that I want to throw out there is it's a really easy beginner trap to fall into to use bang bang bang, which is quarter circle forward heavy punch, the gun with the three projectiles. Mm -hmm. Um you don't want to actually use that move very often. You only want to use it if you've hit confirmed. Okay. And the reason for that is because you're committed to that gun. That gun stays out for a long time. It's like a Tekken gun. Like that you are taking your time to aim and shoot that. So mm. if your opponent avoids that, they get to air dash over, and you're completely vulnerable that entire time for a counter. Hit. So that's that's super risky. Okay. So instead, what you do is you step standing heavy punch, which is a normal projectile, um, and then you can mix that in with all the other specials that you have. So like you use standing heavy punch, call out two bombs, um, and then another standing heavy punch, call out item drop, and start holding that. Uh, so all sorts of fun cancel windows. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Look at you, Wooly! I'm mixing my shit, okay. Right now I have the, like, luck of having you guys on uh, a call to, like, straight up just walk me through it, but this is where, like, jumping on YouTube and grabbing some footage, looking at, like, any anything in, like, a top eight, I imagine is, like, you know, valuable where you can kind of check out a, how someone else is playing their character and what little habits they're doing, and then you can see that and try to take it back to the lab, right? Yes. Yeah, for sure. So. Cool. Um, it was one of those games where there's just so many resources everywhere. Like, there's a whole forum full of, like, it's a treasure trove of information. There yep. is the Mizumi Wiki, which is loaded with information. So, like, if you ever if you want go, information, it's available really for you. Really quickly, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Crank, but if you go to playskullgirls.com, you can actually go ahead and check out a link to all of the greatest matches of Skullgirls community mentioned, as well as going to tunawithbacon.com, which is a community-hosted website by uh, Gelato. 
who actually created a match database, a, a computer that, a, a program that basically searches through YouTube and finds literally all the matches for you. But you can find links to that and much, much more by going to placegoldgirls.com. Peacock is definitely not one of the easiest people to do a BNB with, and a lot of that comes down to her air dash cancel. So she does have an air dash, um, but it's really weird. Like if you try it out, um, do a forward air dash. Yeah, she does that little hop forward. Because that awkward pause, it makes Link Windows a little bit weird. Because you want that forward momentum you get, but sometimes you don't get it if you cancel too early. Like if you do an air dash into um, like just a jumping light punch. Try that out. Yeah, so you want to try and get that as much horizontal momentum as possible. But like if you do it a little bit too early, you start falling straight down. Right. Right. The best way to learn a BNB, especially long ones, is to break it down to steps, right? So taking it one chain at a time. That's also really useful for whenever you hit confirm. You're like, oh, I recognize this hit confirm. I can Why go don't into we whatever go chain into I recognize. one of the trials? From the basics, um, you're going to do standing light punch two times, crouching medium kick. So after crouching medium kick, you're going to do crouching heavy punch. All right. And then you're gonna call H item. No, M bang. So of course. M bang, M bang. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From there you can go into super, and there you go. You have a full string that you can do. All right. So it's a good place to get started. Doesn't build any in busy right now because we are still like without getting into too many technical details. We are early in the combo stages, um, which means that that entire string will build zero on busy, so you can keep on doing Oops. that without ever triggering any sort of infinite protection. Uh. That wasn't real, everybody. That wasn't real. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why don't you try DHCing into SSJ from there? Very nice. Alright. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Nice. The neat thing about that is whenever you DHC into SSJ, now we'll talk more about it when we start focusing on band, um, but you still have what's called Soundstone, which is his core mechanic. Right. So you can do eight giant step and go into another SSJ if you have another meter to burn. Uh, oh, I hate this character. Whoops. One second. I'll bring him in. Don't you don't have to hard. You don't have to snap him out. I'll bring her out. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, can you explain Undizzy, please? So Undizzy is essentially Mike's answer to making sure that combos don't essentially become infinite or go on too long, even if they don't break IPS. Right? There are different stages. IPS. Yes, IPS is an infinite protection system. There we go. It's a thing to make sure that after you get to a certain combo stage, you are no longer able to cancel combos. Uh, things that take you to another combo stage, knockdowns, OTG, jumping in the air, uh, land canceling, things like that. Those essentially move into another level of the combo, and after that point, you can't repeat your buttons, right? So if you do a very basic combo of just this into launcher, right? If anything I do in the air, I can only do in the air once, right? When I land again, if I try to if I try to do another launcher inside of that, I will get my IPS. Basically, uh, that it's your anti-infinite system, right? It's it's the yeah. it's the free burst you get that that looks pink that gets people off of you. So it is pink, yeah, it's red. Um, red now red, red, comparatively, red. undizzy is a little bit different. In the middle of combos, there is a bar that hops up underneath. Actually, I'm just gonna go back to Eliza because I think I can. I think I can do it. I can literally play Eliza without thinking. It's gonna be so much easier for me. We're gonna do that. Totally. I'm gonna go trio, Eliza, Misfortune, Philia, and we'll do the thing. Okay. But um, basically, I'm gonna show you the different bursts between Undizzy and everything else because it, it's it's really easy when you see it. When you see it, you'll be like, okay, simple, simple, easy. Okay, so when you make your colors match, it's a flex. Yeah. Ah. Uh... You, you should be terrified if someone has matching colors. Uh... Ah. Gotcha. You should be horrified. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm just gonna do a really basic launcher. And I'm gonna do it again Oops. without dropping it this time. When I get back up in that air, the minute I press that heavy punch, because I've already done heavy punch inside of the air, you see that there was a red burst, right? Pace, that yeah. is that is IPS. That's the game saying, hey, Sharpie, you already pressed that button in the air. You can't press it in the air again. You can't have that stage of combo again. Whereas Undizzy is essentially saying, okay, every single move, be it light, medium, or heavy, has a certain amount of Undizzy attached to it. And I believe the static amount, is it 250? It is 240. It's 240. Okay, it doesn't affect me as a solo too much because of the amount of damage that I do, but it does affect trios, it does affect uh, duos, specifically because it limits how much they can do before they reset. Something that a lot of intermediate and advanced players do, and this is what you have to be super, super, super worried about, 
is um, what are known as burst baits. If someone is mashing a button and you know that you are about to trigger IPS or you know that you're about to trigger Undizzy and you want to punish them for pressing that button, you can go ahead and put them in situations where if they mash, you will be blocking, therefore not thrown to the other side of the stage on that burst, right? So your character can, so the person that forces you to burst can block that burst and then you can go ahead and punish them for it. Infinite prevention system, I, I definitely recall and understand. It's as simple as like, you gotta keep your combos unique, otherwise you get that free burst. Yeah. Undizzy yeah. is still a concept I'm not entirely following here, so. Uh, it, it seems like a longer action. Yeah, go ahead, like, go ahead. Sharpie, Sharpie did an awesome job like explaining it for the most part. Undizzy is a meter, it fills up, and the way it fills up is by your opponent comboing you, right? Uh, every light that they do after a certain number of hits starts adding 15, every medium they do adds 20, and every heavy they do adds 30. Okay. So, because of that, you want to specifically route your buttons so that you're getting the most damage you can with the um, little amount of Undizzy you have to work with. Okay. So once that Undizzy bar fills up, yeah. um, that's when that burst um, threat becomes. It's basically the number that builds up until that burst becomes available. Right. So oh, if you keep a close eye okay. on that, okay. and that bar will actually even start shining once it fills up, like you'll see it right here. Um, when that bar starts uh, sparkling, then you know that, alright, the threat of a burst is coming up soon. The next string will trigger that. Okay. Um, you can see it stays for a little bit after the combo is dropped. That's to stop someone from specifically dropping their combo only to immediately reset you back into the same thing with the amount of undizzy it sticks around for a little bit okay so undizzy is the currency that cashes out into uh a burst yep yeah got it. got it got it so okay. it actually ends up being the defender's friend too because when it's full um that means your opponent if they reset you can only do so much against you like they'll only get one or two more strings because like sharpie mentioned it's not draining away right away right so because of that it also is a defensive thing and you end up paying that currency if you try to tech out of the corner or do various different techniques that um, would otherwise cause that busy to go down. Gotcha. So it's a it's kind of a ebb and flow between the person on offense and the person on defense. Is there any um, I guess like thing you can th think of that's like a, a setup into like perhaps for level three? Yeah. So Peacock's level three is actually really really unique um, because it's off of the grabs. So as soon as you grab, then you have to go into level three. Right. Um, the only way you can combo into it is uh, the only way you can combo into a grab in general which is uh, by staggering your opponent. Peacock does in fact have a stagger, it's quarter of forward light punch, that white flag uh, gun that she's got. Uh, that is its purpose. So if you do want to go into that, like remember you were doing the combo, which was uh, two hits of standing light punch, crouching medium punch, heavy punch, and going into that instead, then you can dash of grab them and go into level three. Um, you did it just as soon as I was back from recovery. I don't know if it's all the white sparks or not. Okay, okay. I think you can do grab without dashing up. Without grab dashing? Yeah. yeah dab, get, grab range is pretty big. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. Oh, yeah, that does work. Okay. Yeah. This game is really lenient when it comes to grabs. It's an cool. underutilized tech, okay. I still believe. Just because you can be punished for it so much, but when you grab someone, like... That's okay. my grab range. You see what I'm at? Cool. Okay, so yeah, that's a, that's combo to level three right there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You also can DHC into it um, pretty easily. Like you don't have to worry too much about it, like being properly spaced or anything. Level three DHC. Is oh, if someone if someone else is not is hitting. Yeah. Okay. So. Had too late. You want to do it before the fourth hit? There you go. There you go. Does it work if you go into uh, tuba 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 tuba? Well, or do you, does you get? Do you think it's you get? It's still cancelable, I believe. That tuba is still cancelable, so it should still work. Okay. Ah. Yep. If you want to try taunting when doing it. Yeah. Okay. You know what a taunt is, big band, I assume. Uh, yeah. I think it's a forward, a heavy, medium, light punch, and then back. It's forward and then heavy, medium, light, and then forward again. Forward, forward. Whoops. Okay. There we go. Right. So. Wrong, Wrong order. Yeah. Weird. You should still be able to rotate through. <laughs> sure. Yep, there you go. Sure. Fun way to burn five meters. Now, something because you did a mid screen, I want to point something out. It causes a sliding knockdown. So while she's sliding away from you, that gives you all the time in the world when you have Peacock out to set up your projectiles, um, set up a Lenny if you have meter left, or do all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, so you can you can get right back into a zoning game. After that yep. lands. Interesting. Very easily. Uh, Peacock is a very fun character. Let's take a look. A lot of her... I mean, this is, you kind of see this as a common trend for a lot of characters. 
but a lot of their kit kind of ties back into itself a lot. There's very little okay. restriction on how flexibly you use your character. Any punch cancels into a kick, and in general, and inside of this game, any light cancels into a medium, any medium and cancels into a heavy, and any normal attack cancels into a special, any special cancels into a super. It is that flow chart for how you essentially want to move. Those are really the only rules you have the for magic respect. series. Yeah, um, that, Undizzy, and IPS are really the only rules you really have to respect when you're building combos, but other than that, just have fun. Do what works for you and works for your team. Okay, perfect. Let's bring in Big Band. There are a lot of interesting characteristics and things you gotta remember about him. So I mentioned very briefly, alluded to the concept of sound stun. So Big Band has only a handful of moves that cause these wonderful musical notes to pop up. That, that is one of them, Crouching Hard Punch. Another one is Giant Step. We do Corsicle Forward, or I'm sorry, Corsicle Back Kick. Yep, you'll see the sound pop up there. And, um, I'm trying to remember the third one from the top of my head. Symbols. So, yeah, is it a beat Oh, did you already do beat well, I'm sorry. Oh, beat extend is number four, that's correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you can only use one sound stun in your row. Um, and that causes a lot of interesting circumstances for Big Band, where Big Band has some really cool and really strong combos, but he has to know a different one for every different spacing. So there are a couple of universal things that we can teach, for sure. Um, okay. But knowing one combo from mid-screen, knowing one corner combo, like all that stuff kind of comes naturally with the package of playing Band. Okay. Uh, but we can, we can talk about how we play neutral first. I remember yes. a lot when you were playing Eliza, um, you were using Crouching Hard Kick a lot. You were using it to space out and then sweep. And that's not that bad of an idea. It is his heavy low, it has a huge hitbox, but it is a sweep. So in Skullgirls, Crouching Hard Kick is a universal sweep uh, with every character other than Robo. And that means that you cannot really combo after it. Mm. Um, they're in a completely invulnerable knockdown state. The only time you can combo after a sweep is if they were already in a knockdown state. In that case, you can hit them with the sweep and then convert do all sorts of stuff. And that gets into like the technical aspects of like building a combo and routing that out. And it's not really something you should worry about too much right now. Okay. But if they respect the sweep, then you can cancel into giant stuff like that and get an overhead. So like, there's always some way to pull forward. Right. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and back up one more time and do it on my incoming. Okay, from that far away. Okay. Yeah, you see? Yeah. The entire thing is active. So it's not his best anti air, but you know, push But it comes can, down. yeah. Now if you throw yeah. but if you throw out a good button, like that's not work that's not working, right? I mean <laughs> Go for it, yeah. like go for yeah, it. Just for ten, just to see it. Exactly. Like what, what's what's a what's a good jumping aerial for you? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you ready? It's not it, I don't think it beats this. Because yeah. the problem with Big Band is he's just so damn big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if I do so, it early, that's that's not working. Totally. Yeah. All right. Jumping hard kick. Let's go. Now, the Ugh. best thing about jumping hard kick is it puts you know, a knockdown Ugh. state that is techable. So if you hold forward and a punch button right after you land, you can just fly forward. Interesting. Like that. Didn't know yeah. that. Now, that okay. actually is fundamental for uh, some of his links, because a lot of his combos do oh. force you to bounce your opponent off the wall and getting that space is going to be exactly how you convert, just like right. that. Right. Okay. It hurts. <laughs> well, that, 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 right that double cross-up is <laughs> wild. Okay. And I made mm. this possible. I'm so... Why did I do this to myself? Create your own worst enemy. Whoop. I'm going to go ahead and try to challenge that really quick, and you get to see how that turns out for me. Here we go. Okay. Can you move back, Smidgey? Yep. Thank you. Here we go. So I can do it yeah. early and it's active the whole way, right? The whole entire all the way until you beautiful. Okay. Whole <laughs> way. Okay. And then if you push forward, it's completely invulnerable. That bounce forward. Hey, this button. Ah. Hey. Oh yeah. Look at Wooly's face. He's like, oh, this was the answer. <laughs> this was the answer. I got too blown up by stupid jumping MK, and I just thought I had to respect it. But this was the end. That's what that sound was, y'all. That's what that sound was, and I know you respect it. If I see any more drop kicks inside of my chat, y'all getting kicked. Y'all get kicked, and we'll be back till tomorrow. Don't try me. I gave you a chance. This is your first and last warning. <laughs> try me, buddy. Try me. Let me see single drop kick. You went over the move. It's done. All right, drop kick, drop kick. That's pretty sweet. Uh, if it Let's gets blocked, it. right? <laughs> Which it never you does. still get the tech, and it's still kind of tough to punch. Because you remember, it's that really, tech really is entirely invulnerable. Oh, uh, block it for a second? Yeah. Not punishable. 
not punishable. Okay. I mean, unless I like super. But the reactions I would need to do that. Especially live. I would really need to see you like mashing it, you know what I mean? Oh man. My inputs are not clean. Okay, let's do this. Okay. I'm not getting But yeah, yeah, gotcha. that's, that's really the only punish you could do. Oh. Or if I like, called an assist. Y'all really it's tricked fine. me into teaching this man Big Band. Y'all really made me do that. That's crazy. I don't. Oh, we're just getting started. Well, that was the first thing. <laughs> that was the first yeah. thing. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to talk about what makes Big Band Big Band. And the thing that makes Big Band Big Band is big balls. You got to car cancel that into all sorts of different nonsense. So jumping hard kick cannot be canceled into um, most things, it's like specifically like symbols and stuff like that. If you can cancel jumping hard kick into symbols, that'd be insane. It's a very unique moment in that sense. But it does let you tech forward and get that invulnerable stuff. Um, and that is tough to deal with sometimes. But what crouching hard kick does let you do is it lets you car cancel, which is like if you notice Sharpie is jumping in on you and you use crouching hard kick and you're like, oh no, they're pressing a button, I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. You can cancel that on whiff to DP, to A train, to all sorts of different things to catch them out of the air. Yeah, like that. There you go. Uh, so sometimes you got to make a lot of those commitments, a lot of those reads, and it's going to be really, really fast reaction timing at the highest level. Um, okay. But Big Band has all these really, really amazing tools like Beat Extend, A Train, um, Brass, and sometimes you'll, if you find yourself committed to a button like a heavy, like crouching hard kick, then car canceling and then going for some sort of frame trap um, and making your opponent respect you is going to be your best bet. Okay. Touched on A Train a little bit. A Train is nice because uh, you're going to be fighting Eliza a lot, and Eliza has a skeleton, and A Train. While Eliza is vulnerable, is a grab. So that means you can grab her out of her skeleton. So if you A-train the jumping skeleton, there you go. You don't have to deal with that anymore. On top of that, A-train is armored. So oh it's it's god. a good friend. Yeah, it's a good friend. Oh my god. <laughs> don't. Yeah. Just, just do it. Just it's fucking... Okay. Just end me. There you go. Right. So against against that skeleton, that's gonna be your best friend. So if H giant step hits, like, and you see them all over full screen, your turn isn't over. You can go into H brass, like if you're buffering a charge, and then go into uh, SSJ afterwards as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like. Yeah, like that. And then right, if you go right, into right. SSJ, that converts, gets you full screen, you get to play the game all over again. There you go. And for a meter, you just okay. got rid of like a third of a trio's health. From full screen, that works. Okay, perfect. Cool. Yeah. Full screen! Yeah, no, it works. It's really great. <laughs> cool. Full screen. As soon as you see Soundstone come out, you can probably go into A Train, go into uh, uh, SSJ after yep. that. Okay. And then get full screen, then play the same game. Right. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, when you get to like intermediate level and you start optimizing, you're never going to SSJ after the A-Train. You're just going to take the sliding knockdown and actually apply pressure. Oh, um, okay. But for now, like just getting that damage, even though it's like really scaled, it's just a fast way to burn the meter and get some damage with Ban. Because Ban gets really hard. Gotcha. Even, on, even on Duo, you have to respect that damage. That's... Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus. Gotcha. Okay, cool. I'm going to touch on one really specific thing based on the stuff that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, if you hit with an SSJ before you've used Sound Stun, like if you just did a raw SSJ reversal, like right here, and then go into H Giant Step, well, as soon as they hit the ground, you'll be able to do another SSJ. You almost got it. Yeah. <laughs> so that is Mike's character. <laughs> it is really fun to burn meter on. Wow, Sentinel. Okay, so yeah, if, if you if you if you if you basically call out some nonsense and you hit it with a, with a raw, then you can just go right back into it. Okay. Yep. In Skullgirls, you always start a BNB with a crouching light kick. That's universally true. So you're gonna go from crouching light kick to uh, crouching medium kick. Oh, I'm sorry. Mid okay. Yeah, mid screen. And then you're gonna go into standing hard punch, which is gonna launch them, and you're gonna <laughs> jump cancel that. So just get used to that feeling. Whoops. So as you jump cancel, you're going to try and go for a very fast jumping medium punch, jumping heavy punch, and then jumping hard kick. It's going to look like two little flames and then the hard kick. If you do the jump cancel fast enough, you should be able to get 
that to link together. If you don't press the jumping medium punch fast enough, it is tough. Almost as soon as you would jump. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I can just hear his buttons, like... <laughs> <laughs> hey, ah, there, there you go. go. Okay. So, okay. if you remember, after jumping hard kick, you can tech forward. When you tech yes, forward, you're going to yes. convert with crouching medium punch. And that's when things get fun. Oh my god, okay. Okay, so it's part one. Okay, this is this is combo practice. This is how you do it. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Tech forward. And then... Yeah. That time oh. you were a little bit too close to the corner, but um, okay. like, now that Eliza's secured, like this is a good spot. That link is not easy. Ugh. It's not super intuitive, but when you get it, that's that's when the magic happens. Tech forward, you get the crouching medium punch, and then after that, you can cancel the crouching medium punch into H beat extend, and now they're stuck above you, and you can press whatever buttons you want. Yeah, my mistake. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So once they're stuck above you like that, they're in sound sun, you get to have all sorts of fun. Like you can do um, all sorts of long combo links from there. Uh, but at that point, the world is your oyster. But to start off, just getting those three getting strings Getting all down, that together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, it's, that's it's, enough it's to a... get you started. I mentioned how you cancel crouching hard kick into beat extend, but jumping hard kick, you can't cancel into symbols. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to cancel that into Timpani Drive instead, his other super. So in the air, you're going to do course looking forward two kicks right. um, after you do a jumping hard kick. Now you can just move them over and fall onto them, press whatever button you want to pick up. Usually, usually crouching light kick is people's favorite to pick up with OTG there. So whenever you notice that, oh no, you're a little bit too close to the corner and you're not really comfortable, okay. after the jumping hard kick, just use Timpani and then just carry him to the corner and then go from there. You're not going to wait till you touch the ground, you're going to use jumping light kick as you're falling. As you're falling. Okay. Okay. There you go. You uh, pick okay. up off of OTV there, and then you can go into all sorts of buttons like crouching light punch, crouching light kick, and then uh, convert off of that. Okay, so basically just to just to know, like, if you hit, uh, yeah, light kick on the way down from that, then you can do other stuff afterwards. That's a decent place to... Yep. Yeah. It, so th this is kind of the, this is kind of the part where I'm like, okay, if I see like really really tight timing on, um, <laughs> like on the jump cancel, for example, uh, I would have a like. Le uh, a less optimal but more uh, friendly like version of it that I would start using and then mm -hmm. as I got more comfortable with automating the rest of the combo in my brain I'd then switch mm -hmm. back to the tighter version that was uh, um, what you mentioned you know just so that like the muscle memory sure. bakes in like a version of it where like 90% of the combo is the, is the optimal one and then like there's that one little bit where I'm like okay I know I have to focus on that mm -hmm. If you want to stick to one basic string and stay on the ground uh, and not deal with that jump link, you can always go um, into heavy kick instead of standing heavy punch. Go with standing heavy kick, and then you'll be able to go into A train if you're buffering charge. Into what? Sorry? A train, so okay. back forward heavy kick. Okay. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But when you land on the ground, like sparks can fly out, and those sparks indicate that you have bounced on the ground, and only then are you. Do only you have a window? Then, uh... Okay. Yeah, let's go over OTG. Okay, so do you want to talk about that or should I? Sure. Uh, why don't you go ahead and cover it? Because I feel really embarrassed. I covered it earlier inside the video and I actually did it backwards. So <laughs> I literally was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple is techable. It's fine, everybody. It's fine. And everyone's like, that's backwards, Sharpie. And I was like, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to shut my mouth. Because I know when I can press buttons and I know I can't, but you, you put me on the spot. <laughs> Just like Sharpie mentioned, there are colored sparks that fly out when you bounce. And just yeah, like Sharpie mentioned, she did have a backwards purple is the one that's not techable. That is the first spark you will see when you bounce on the ground. Um, purple means that uh, you are being hit and you are cons the person hitting you is consuming OTG. In there. And that OTG, of course, stands for off the ground. Um, that means you can pick up off the ground, keep on going with your combo. And uh, in fact, the route I specifically showed you when you tech forward and use crouching medium punch consumes OTG. You'll see purple sparks fly out of Eliza as she bounces off the ground. You may have seen that second spark actually a double bounce right there. Yep. And so you yeah. did now. So now when I get knocked down, I can go ahead and press a button. Right? Because that, mm -hmm. that second one was blue. Yeah, so those blue sparks that fly out means that you are able to tech backwards or forward. You have a small window to press forward or backward heavy punch, and that's how you'll get the tech. Right there. Uh, there is one more type of spark, and it's green sparks, and you'll only see it if you got knocked down by an assist. So if an assist makes you hit the ground, uh, green sparks will fly out instead. There you go. Oh, you'll see the green sparks fly out. There yeah. you go. Jumped over the assist, okay. 
Bam. There it is. Okay, I see it. The game has a lot of visual indicators, which is something I really like about it. Yeah. It gives you a lot of knowledge in the moment. And that's the type of stuff that you, you know, I really respect about it. Because I had, yeah, go ahead. In games that are, oh, I'm sorry. Even in games that are super duper fast, um, super duper fast paced, you're still getting a bunch of information about your opponent between every single match and between every single reset. So taking that split second to just dissect what happened based off the reset or based off the overhead reset or lower reset or grab reset or even just like fake OTG setups. Uh, you can learn so much in between matches between that. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea that the the sparks conveyed so much information. I, I really didn't know about that. That's not something uh, I feel like you hear about too often. Um, that's yeah. fucking amazing because not there's a whole lot of fighting games that do not do that. Just really quick, I'm seeing a lot of questions in chat specifically asking if the tutorial covers this. The tutorial does covers literally everything we're talking about. Um, the problem is is that people typically don't retain information when it's inside of the tutorial. They don't really retain that information. As I have a match, they get in the match and they just start mashing like anything. And you could even be a veteran inside of fighting games and still not know it's there just because of how easy it is to overlook. So it's important to read every single aspect of the tutorial. If you have questions, get on discord.gg slash skullgirls or go to playskullgirls.com to get more information and uh, ask a friend. A lot of very knowledgeable people inside this community that would be more than happy to help you with any aspect of that. Last question here uh, about Big Band. Teach me how to play something sweet. Oh God. Oh uh, God. I can't do that, but no. I do know that there is a note that makes a visual effect, but doesn't actually have a sound. And it's one of the medium or hard kick directions. So you press up and medium kick or down and medium kick, or maybe it's heavy kick. One of them just makes no sound. Ringo says, as a trumpet player, it's pretty damn accurate. Yeah, actually Mike based it specifically off of the exact inputs and everything like that that he uses for a trumpet. I play violin, um, and I do read music, as, as Sonic Fox does as well, and I, I think we can both attest to the fact that the big band combos that they actually have for songs are very, very accurate to how music is actually written, how uh, the trumpet is actually played. Yeah, no, I mean, I think when you see a move like that and the fact that they put, like, all all these... Like, when you see that much work put into, like, the amount of notes, it's very clear they're like, we want you to be able to play anything with this. I will teach you one thing, and it's how to cheat. So, normally, to use Big Band's level 5, Zawaro, though, you want to, like, play the first four notes of the Skullgirls theme song, which is Crouching Light Punch. Um, actually, I don't remember it, because yeah. no one uses that. Jab, Crouching Short... Oh, uh, sorry, light punch plus medium punch for the last one. I plus medium all punch. Right. Okay, all right. Yeah. There you go. Da, 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 whatever the rest of it is, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can use Corsica forward, light punch plus medium punch to do um, Ora Ora really, really heavily on your opponent, level 5. There you go. And that will destroy most people. It's really, really good. And uh, I, I noticed that you can do stuff afterwards, too. There's a wall yeah, bounce you get there, the wall right? Bounce. Yep. So if you remember crouching medium punch into H beat extend, that right. link is important because it shows up in multiple places, and that's one of them. Oh. oh okay. That was right away, really. IPS, IPS. IPS. There you go. Okay. Into stuff. Yeah. So the reason I want to bring up level 5 is because that's really annoying to press. Like standing light punch, mm. crouching light punch, standing light, or, mm -hmm. or crouching light, so on and so forth. Um, so instead what we can do is you can press standing light punch, and then hold down, and then press light kick, light punch, uh, and medium punch. Just strum your fingers. Light kick, light punch. Okay, so pull out the trumpet, and then... Press light punch, and then hold down, and then light kick, light punch, medium punch. It's kind of difficult to visualize. There, there you go. go. I think you might have gotten Oh, it. the piano. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I, so I, basically I, if you piano your fingers across it's the three pian things, piano uh, up the upper just takes advantage of it, and you don't have to worry about it at all. Got it, got it, got it, got it. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's a bit like, um... There's uh, instant raging demons that you do in, with uh, Akuma, where you just kind of piano the buttons out like that. Okay, so that way you just don't because have to fucking don't think about the input. You don't have to pull a trumpet at all, actually. In fact. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, shit. No trumpet at all. 
Oh, cool. Trump it with time stop. If someone in chat brought up with something really, really important, that's also how you DHC into it. If you happen to have four meter left after you DHC, or after you have, so you do one super if you have five meter. And, and then, then someone else comes in. And... One meter less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to try like doing Lenny and then, or like Argus into level five. There you go. Rad. Fun for the whole family. Cool. Okay. Thank you. That's fucking sick. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> Anything to make your life more miserable. Oh, God. Welcome to the world. Let's get it on now. Select the mix first bit. Let's get it on now. Select the mix second bit. Let's get it on now. Choose the truth. The best one.